Hello, everybody. If uh, First off, how many people heard my presentation a month ago in Vancouver? Oh, damn. Uh, <laughs> sorry to see you here. Uh, I was unabashedly bullish uh, about a month ago, and uh, gold had gained about over $300 or so. Uh, from the bottom, and I was amazed that everybody was so dour and bearish and disappointed and uh, in a bad mood. And, uh, well, it turns out they may have been right and on to something, but let's get into that. Uh, gold does look ahead. That's kind of the theme of, of this presentation. I'll tell you right now, it's a bit disjointed because the basis of this presentation, a lot of it is taking last month's presentation and showing where we've gone since then, and in some cases why we or I was wrong at that time. But I don't think uh, we were completely wrong. I don't think I was completely wrong. The, the basic thesis of this presentation is that where we were last month and where, where the market was, where the consensus was, that the Fed was nearing the end of its rate hike cycle, maybe only had another quarter point or so in that rate hike cycle, uh, I think that's still valid. I think it may have been delayed by a month or two by subsequent events, by economic data that is still much more resilient than people expected, by inflation that's more persistent, although falling, still more persistent than people expected, and by the resulting Fed rhetoric that tended to put the consensus toward rate hikes going into the summer, into June, and Fed funds rate, in some cases, some people predicting as much as 6%. I'm going to try to show you why I don't think that scenario, scenario is, is accurate and why I think the pendulum has swung too far in that direction. So we'll uh, go through this. And uh, again, we've come a long way. A month ago at MIF, I was crowing about gold's new bull market. Well, that didn't age well. Um, I was going to put a meme here, a picture of something that didn't age well, uh, like Madonna or something like that, but I'm giving the same presentation at PDAC on Sunday, and they made me sign an affidavit saying I would have nothing, say nothing that would create any microaggressions or anything of the sort. So put your meme here, uh, whatever you like. That those predictions did not age well, and this is what happened. This was last month's gold chart. Gold posted a golden cross. The 50-day moving average soared through the 200-day moving average from below. Classic setup. I went through and showed how when gold was in a bull market, this kind of setup uh, most of the time was very bullish and presaged a much more powerful uptrend in gold. That was last month's gold chart. Fast forward to today, we can see that right when I was speaking was right about the peak. Uh, maybe I shouldn't speak so much. Um, gold falls through the 50-day moving average. Um, and so that did not negate, however, that golden cross. If you go back, and it gets to be a very busy chart, but if you go back over a couple of decades, of golden crosses, you can see that this is not atypical and it doesn't do anything to negate that indicator. Now, if it falls through the 200 day, that would be a different thing altogether. But right now, it is uh, it does not negate that, that positive technical formation. In fact, as you can see on this chart, which was done uh, really a day ago, uh, we've had a few days of really nice gains in gold. So. That bottom may have been behind us. We'll have to see. It's still early yet. So gold does look ahead. All of the markets are predictive mechanisms. I think gold is particularly suitable to this and does a very good job of, job of it. A month ago, the markets were anticipating, as I said, the end of the Fed's rate hike crusade, but hotter inflation, economic data. We've gotten a new, more hawkish consensus right now, again, pointing towards something in the uh, in the summer before we get any kind of a pause. Um, importantly, if we look backward on how gold has been a predictive element, one of the things we see is that people really were disappointed in gold's response to inflation. The inflation that hit really starting uh, last spring and through the summer, 
rates that were high as anything we've seen in 40 years, and gold really did nothing. The point that I like to make is gold did do something, and this is what it did. If you go back to when COVID hit, even before COVID hit, gold was beginning to respond to what it saw, what it was predicting down the road as being central bank uh, easing, a central bank policy prescription to address a crisis, some sort of a crisis. Again, this uptrend began even before COVID hit. Uh, and then gold went from around 1150 to a new trading range around 1750 to 2000 and kind of bounced around in there. So this was presaging, this was predicting what was to come, which was the inflation, which was that policy response that we got. Right now, again, we're hoping that this little uptick at the end of this month long downtrend, February, February was not a good month for gold or gold bugs but we're starting to see a bit of recovery where I think the market sentiment is starting to come back toward not quite as severe or at least as accepting of uh, a more hawkish Fed digesting that and then looking toward that pause once again. There are some reasons for skepticism, have been some reasons for skepticism before that bull run that culminated or that rally that culminated about a month ago. Uh, the two areas where people most look to uh, reasons not to put a whole lot of confidence in that gold rally were the supposed underperformance of mining stocks and the underperformance of silver. And again, I think both of those indicators for gold, if you do want gold, well, you do want mining stocks to lead gold on a rally. You want silver to lead and, and outperform gold on a rally. In fact, both did that in that last rally. And in fact, both did that over the last month, but in the wrong direction. This is a bit of a complicated chart, so let me explain it to you. The blue line is gold to GDX ratio. So when that line is falling, stocks are outperforming gold. When that line is rising, gold is outperforming stocks. That gold line is the gold price. So as you can see, during that rally that culminated a little over a month ago, as gold was rising, that line, gold to GDX ratio, was falling. So the stocks were outperforming gold. They were doing their job. Now, in that decline, subsequent decline in the gold price that you see right there, the line goes up. Gold outperformed the stocks. In fact, the gold stocks leveraged gold once again, but to the downside. They outperformed gold to the downside. This chart shows that very clearly. This is a performance chart going back a month. And uh, gold over that period dropped a little over 5%. The GDX dropped a little over 14%. So this indicator is still working. It is showing, it is outperforming gold. What we need to see is that the mining stocks start outperforming gold on the upside as well. Silver, similarly, silver actually started taking off in September of last year, whereas gold didn't bottom until uh, early November. Uh, over that period, as you can see, the gold to silver ratio, that is what this chart is, the gold to silver ratio dropped over that period until about mid-December. So silver was actually outperforming gold during that period. This is what you want to see in a bull run in gold, a rally in gold that's based on monetary issues. And during that period, both of these indicators did just what they were supposed to do. Again, until about mid-December and over the, that last uh, six weeks of the rally, silver did underperform gold. So the key now is what are they going to do over the next couple of weeks? Is this little nascent rebound we're seeing something real? Are they going to outperform gold? Uh, that's what we need to look for. Uh, the bottom line, again, is that I believe the Fed pause has been only postponed, likely by only a month or two. I'm looking to late spring or thereabouts. I think the Fed's going to raise another quarter point at their March uh, 22nd meeting. Um, I think after that, the game is, is, is really up. We don't really know what they're going to do, but maybe another quarter point hike. I think they need to sit back. I think they're going to believe that they need to sit back and see these lagging effects come in. What they've done has been tremendously destructive. 
the, uh, the markets have been built over the last 14 years for a zero interest rate environment. And they have raised rates at about three times the, the, the average pace of any rate hike campaign. One of the quickest going off of zero percentage wise, one of the steepest rate hike campaigns in the history of the central bank, if not the steepest. A lot of damage has been done and the markets are not prepared for that. They do need to sit back and see what they have wrought. There are two possible scenarios going forward then. So if we assume that they're going to pause and we know that there's some kind of a crisis coming up, there will be another one. That's the way things work these days. And they will have to pivot and start lowering rates again. But right now, the pause is all we need to look for. That would be enough for the markets. They're going to have to pause at some point. So with that in mind, there are two possible scenarios. The Fed pauses or pivots after getting inflation near their 2% target or the Fed pauses or pivots without getting inflation anywhere near their, their target. I think inflation is probably going to bottom around 4 to 5% over the long term. So what does that mean for the Fed? In either scenario, if we get a pause, that's bullish for all equities, all assets, uh, stock market as well as, as well as precious metals, as well as gold and silver. But it is much more much more bullish for gold if they pause without getting inflation down. That is essentially admitting that they are impotent uh, in getting inflation down, that they can't get inflation down. In that kind of environment, you are going to have a 4 5 or 6% inflation hurdle that every other asset class has to clear before you actually make real money. Um, and that kind of an inflationary scenario where a central bank can't do anything about inflation is bullish for gold, for silver, for all tangible assets. That means that some allocations of the global capital is going to be shifted toward the metals. And all you need, because gold and silver are such tiny markets relative to the mass of bond markets, the mass of equity markets, if there is just even a fraction of a percentage of, of portfolios allocated toward gold, the results can be spectacular. So that's what I'm looking for is a very likely scenario going forward. But again, any kind of a pause, and we know it's coming, is going to be very bullish for gold as well as all the other markets. Now, talking about gold versus stocks, this is a, an indicator a number of people are starting to look at me as well. Gold divided by, say, the S&P 500. <clears throat> As you can see, when that line is going down, then stocks in the S&P are outperforming gold. But the end of last year, we started to see, and really into December, we saw that bottom. And since then, gold has been outperforming the stock market as represented by the S&P. It's been a bit of a halting recovery, but as you can see, it has broken a number of downtrend lines. One of the key areas people are looking at is that 50 line, right about, right about there. If we get to that, that would uh, signify a, a pretty significant breakout for gold versus the S&P and, and something that would indicate a continued outperformance. And this is important because Ever since the great financial crisis of 2008, the, all of the markets, all of the asset classes have been driven by central bank liquidity. All correlations have trended toward one. So you didn't get the stocks go up, bonds go down, and vice versa kind of a thing. There wasn't anything contracyclical. Everything was floated on a sea of liquidity. So that old 60-40 ratio of portfolios went out the window. The active investing went out the window. Passive investing, just invest in the indices, just ride this wave of liquidity. That became the game. Gold, since the Fed started raising rates in March, gold has shown a few instances of decoupling from stocks. The first two were when the stock market was going up and gold was going down. The last couple have been when gold has gone up and stocks have gone down, which is what we want to see. We want to see this decoupling, and we want to see gold show an ability to rise even as the stock market is flat or going down. And we're starting to see that. The bottom line is that the Fed's rate hike crusade is still nearing its end for one or more of three reasons. 
Markets are addicted to ever easier money. They don't need easy money. They need easier money than they had before. Every time there's a crisis, the Fed comes in with a policy prescription that is much greater than anything they did before, a multiple of what they did before. Before We saw that in COVID. Uh, they did much more than they did post-2008. And when the next crisis comes, and you know it is, they are going to do so much, it will boggle your mind. And uh, in fact, I think to the point where the dollar and all fiat currencies will lose a great deal of credibility. So the markets are addicted and something will break if they keep this high interest rate uh, environment going. That something that will break, number two, is very likely the bond market because like even uh, to a greater gr degree than equities, it is addicted, it is reliant on low interest rates, it's built for low interest rates. Um, Rates rising to as high as they've gotten right now, as quickly as they've gotten, is very likely to break something in the, finan the plumbing of the financial system. But the key thing that's coming up that virtually no one is talking about uh, is the interest expense in the federal debt. This is the latest chart. You know, I've been talking about this for some time now. Uh, but right now, the latest number for quarter four from the Federal Reserve itself is 800 in $52 billion each year, every year, only in interest on the federal debt. That's heading toward that magic trillion dollar number that I've been talking about for some time that I think is going to be politically kind of a, uh, a brick wall in the, well, in the way of the Fed hiking any longer. Trillion dollars is a lot of money and it's a magic number that essentially doubles the deficits right now and overwhelms and, and any other budget item. But again, people are talking now about a Fed funds rate and of five to 6% by the middle of the summer. What does that do? If we get to 6% interest on the federal debt, we'll be paying $1.9 trillion. At some point, people are gonna to start to recognize this. $1.9 trillion will dwarf every other budget category and all other spending and will essentially triple the deficit all on its own. And so how does the, uh, how does Uncle Sam pay that? By borrowing more money to pay the interest on the debt it already has. That's a, a classic debt spiral and one that I think will affect even the global reserve currency. So the current picture is we've come a long way over the last month, but in the, in the wrong direction. Gold's momentum reversed. This is a chart of gold with its 14-week stochastic. Last month, it was right at that peak above 90 at the bottom there. What we wanted at the time was to see that peak extend, kind of a, have a rounded top. It did not. It dropped and has now delivered a sell signal by uh, this indicator. We want that to reverse pretty quickly. And if we have the kind of days we've had over the last week, uh, it will reverse. We'll just have to see where that goes. Dollar's momentum, again, completely reversed from last, uh, last month. It was right at the bottom about a month ago, and now the dollar has delivered a sell signal. So that downtrend that we saw in the dollar has at least temporarily been halted. Again, the last few days, that has changed a bit. So we'll see how that works out. One of the things that I really like, one of the sectors I really like is copper for the longer term. Um, it has, it dropped below $4 very recently, but it's now recovered. It did the same thing as the, uh, as gold with that golden cross. I'm very bullish on copper and I'm sure most of you are, uh, for all the reasons I don't need to get into right now, but one of which is that copper supplies are tight. This is the six month LME copper warehouse total. Uh, it has dropped to very low levels, historically low levels. And while the uh, descent has, has kind of plateaued off, it's still at very low levels and copper supplies the world over are tight. We have a demand curve coming up that's going to be exceptional and the copper supplies just aren't there to meet it. Bottom line, the pause is postponed, but in my view, the bull run will resume. And uh, this, these, this is my contact information, goldnewsletter.com. New Orleans Investment Conference this year, November 1st to 4th, and I am ending right on time. So 
Congratulations to me for that. It rarely happens. Thank you.